The year was 1947. In a brightly lit operation room, a 14-year-old boy lay unconscious with his chest cut open and his heart openly visible. Above him was Dr. Claude Beck. The boy was undergoing an operation for a funnel chest deformity, and when Dr. Beck was closing up his heart, his pulse suddenly ceased. Dr. Beck opened up the boy's chest again and saw his fibrillating heart. He called for an external defibrillator, a brand new device he had helped create, and he sat for 45 minutes massaging his heart until the device was brought in. Dr. Beck administered an alternating current of 60 Hz to the boy's heart, and on the second try, the heart successfully restarted. This ordeal went down in history as the first successful usage of the external defibrillator, and it led to one of the biggest advancements in medical history the creation and implementation of the automated external defibrillator. To understand the history of AEDs, you must first know how they work. AEDs are used in emergency situations involving cardiac arrest. Unlike normal external defibrillators, they are portable and are usually found in places with a large number of people, such as airports and schools. During the normal usage of an AED, two thin pads containing electrodes are stuck to the patient's chest. The patient is then shocked, which is supposed to restart or return the heart's rhythm. Emergency personnel are trained in the use of AEDs. However, AEDs are designed to be used by anyone in the general public, with instructions provided by the machine. Take off. Check responsiveness. Call for help. Before the creation of defibrillators, Many methods such as the Hall method and Sylvester method were used to try to keep the heart beating. Though these methods were useful for artificial respiration, they didn't prove to be useful for restarting the heart because they only moved the body of the patient and there was no pressure applied to the heart. In 1874, a German physiologist named Moritz Schiff revealed that massaging the heart during surgery can restore circulation. This exploration was crucial because surgeons finally had a way to restore blood circulation in the heart. But this procedure was costly and took a large amount of time. In 1924, the American Heart Association was created, acting as a professional society for doctors. Today, the American Heart Association is one of the leading forces for heart diseases and emergency cardiovascular care training, such as CPR. In 1933, a young engineer named William Cohenhoven accidentally discovered that small electric charges can restore a heart's normal rhythm. Cohenhoven and his team at Johns Hopkins University were applying surges of electricity to a dog's heart. And on the second shock, the dog's fibrillating heart was restored to a normal heart rhythm. This was the first known case of electrical charges reviving a fibrillating heart. From 1933 to 1947, Cohenhoven and his team worked at trying to use this technique during open chest cardiac resuscitation. This research eventually led to the famous case of a defibrillator saving a 14-year-old boy in 1947. In 1951, Cohenhoven and his team began research into the development of a closed chest defibrillator. Cohenhoven stated that the device, quote, would be portable, effective, simple to operate, and the shock of which could be sent through the chest of an individual whose heart was beating normally, without fear of injury. This research was the start of the creation of the modern automated external defibrillator. Six years later, in 1957, Cohenhoven and his team created the Hopkins AC Close Chest Defibrillator, the first external defibrillator. The defibrillator weighed 200 pounds and was mounted on a rolling cart. The machine delivered a defibrillating countershock of 5 amperes at 440 volts for a quarter second via two main electrodes. After testing the machine on animals for over two months, on March 17, 1957, at the Hopkins Hospital, Dr. Gottlieb C. Freisinger became the first to use the machine on a patient, a 42-year-old man. When the countershock was sent through the patient's chest 72 seconds after his heart failed, his heart was defibrillated and was revived. I am Richard Hired, an operation on deforming my chest. The operation was completed. Suddenly my heart went into fibrillation. They opened it up 
shock the heart. I am told this is the first successful case in medical history. Oh, defibrillated. You were the first one in history to have your heart defibrillated. The first one in history to have your heart defibrillated. From that moment forward, the only thing on the mind of Cohen Hoven and his team was creating a usable, lightweight, portable defibrillator. But it wasn't Cohen Hoven who created the first portable defibrillator. In 1965, an Irish physician and cardiologist named Frank Pantridge created a 150-pound portable defibrillator for use in a Belfast ambulance. It was powered by car batteries. Though weighing 150 pounds, it technically wasn't easily portable. Since it was used in an ambulance, it was considered to be the first portable defibrillator. In 1968, Pantridge created his second design, which significantly reduced the weight to only 6.61 pounds, and it was powered by a miniature capacitor designed by NASA. It was even used to treat U.S. President Lyndon Johnson when he suffered a heart attack in 1972. Even after portable defibrillators were created in the late 60s, they weren't available to the general public until many years afterwards. Many people were scared of the idea that untrained people would be administering electric shocks to someone's heart. People needed an easy-to-use AED that was safe to use by a bystander. This idea came to life in 1978. Physicians Ark Dyack and W. Stanley Wellborn worked with engineer Robert Rollman to design a safe and easy-to-use AED. They ended up with what they called the heart aid, which was the first commercially available AED. Heart Aid itself was a huge success commercially, but shaped the way for modern AEDs. AEDs today use technology that is rooted from the Heart Aid, such as the use of adhesive pads for electrodes, voice coaching, and heart monitoring sensors. Today, most AEDs weigh only about 3 pounds and are available commercially for in-home use. In Texas, it is required that every school campus must have an AED, along with nursing homes and dental offices. In the 20th century, surviving cardiac arrest outside of a hospital was considered a miracle. But today, AEDs have helped save the lives of thousands of people yearly. Before, when somebody had a cardiac arrest, you would need a trained person, either a doctor, nurse, EMT, who can analyze the rhythm and then do the appropriate treatment according to that. Um, uh, you know, brain can survive without oxygen, without circulation for only six minutes. After that, you start having cell death in the brain. So the, the time is of essence when somebody has a sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, and the best way to, res uh, to restore circulation so the brain can get oxygen and uh, nutrients, especially oxygen, is by CPR. Of course, the most important thing is CPR and thereby restoring the rhythm through the defibrillation with these devices. I had to wait for the uh, EMTs to arrive, you would lose a lot of time. In the hospital, patients are monitored by, of course, trained people, by doctors and nurses. So if they detect an arrhythmia on the monitor, they use the old-fashioned, you cannot call it old-fashioned, but the regular defibrillators that are not AEDs. These defibrillators show you the actual rhythm and is analyzed by the doctor or the nurse and then decide to shock the patient or not. So, but in the community, when there is no doctor or nurse or EMT around, so nobody can analyze the rhythm, a lay person, non-medical person cannot really analyze the, the uh, rhythm, uh, this device does that for them. AEDs have revolutionized modern medicine. They have completely changed how cardiac arrest is treated and have saved thousands of lives. With over a century of research and development, AEDs have been tweaked, changed, and modernized to become safer and more effective. A device that can make a dead person come back to life. A device that can literally make a completely stopped heart beat again. A device that senses the condition of your heart and automatically gives protocols, all at the hands of an untrained citizen. AEDs have truly changed the frontier of modern medicine.